Hello and welcome to this special Veterans Day virtual cemetery tour honoring the veterans buried in Hamilton Church Cemetery in Olive Township in St. Joseph County. I'm your host, Travis Childs, Director of Education at the History Museum and also the St. Joseph County Historian. The Hamilton Church Cemetery is located adjacent to the historic Hamilton Church at the intersection of Chicago Trail and Walnut Road. This intersection and the surrounding area are denoted and known as Hamilton, Indiana. Hamilton was previously known as Terra Coupe Prairie or as Terra Coupe, Indiana. The oldest rec record of a burial in the Hamilton Cemetery was in 1830. The Hamilton Church building was started in 1838. When it was almost completed, it burned to the ground and the construction had to start all over again. The new church was dedicated along with the cemetery in 1843, entirely free from debt. The Hamilton Church is said to be the oldest Methodist church building north of the Wabash River. The church has a belfry uh, which used to house a solid iron bell imported from New York and dedicated to the church by the Reynolds family sometime before 1866. I don't know, however, if the bell is still there or not. So let's get started with a Veterans Virtual Cemetery Tour of Hamilton Church Cemetery. Lloyd Borden was born in New Carlisle, May 8, 1889. He worked on his mom and dad's farm in New Carlisle until he enlisted at the breakout of World War I. Lloyd was attached to Company A of the 5th Engineers. The 5th Regiment of Engineers was formed at Fort Sam Houston on May 21, 1917. At the time, the new regiment had 11 officers and 274 soldiers. The regiment moved to Camp Wheeler, Georgia, and was attached to the 7th Infantry Division. They were ordered to Camp Merritt, New Jersey, in order to train to deploy with the 7th Infantry to the front for service in World War I. Lloyd sailed on the H.R. Mallory on July 9, 1918, and sailed for France. They arrived in Brest, France on August 12th. On midnight, October 9th, after relieving some other regiments, the 5th Engineers were welcomed to France with a large artillery barrage from the Germans. Lloyd and the rest of the 5th Engineers began stringing barbed wire, digging trenches, and creating shelters. They were about ready to move up to positions to support the 2nd Army's winter offensive, but prior to the start of the offensive, the armistice was signed. The 5th was assigned to Bouillonville in France and began building bridges, new barracks, and clearing mines. The soldiers of the 5th Regiment cleared and detonated over 1,000 mines and received an official commendation for its effort in clearing the roads through Zams, Charest, and Marjolet Tour the route Patton's 3rd Army would take into Germany 26 years later. After sailing back to the U.S., Lloyd was honorably discharged April 3, 1919. He went back to his mom and dad's farm and became the owner of the land after his mom and dad passed. Lloyd Borden never married and died June 13, 1954 at the age of 65. Lloyd Borden's brother, Clinton Borden, was born in New Carlisle, Indiana, January 27, 1887. When he was 30 years old, he enlisted for World War I on October 2, 1917. He was assigned to the 104th Engineers Regiment, eventually reaching the rank of First Lieutenant. The 104 Engineers was formed October 6, 1917. The regiment was called into federal service on June 20, 1917. On June 14, 1918, the regiment arrived at Brest, France and saw action at Moats, Grand Champs, Coblanc, and Lafford. On May 11, 1919, the regiment was sent home to Fort Dix, New Jersey, where it was mustered out of service and Lieutenant Borden was formally discharged June 24, 1919. On June 8, 1919, he married Helen Barnes and they had three sons. He retired as a member of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Clinton Borden died June 27, 1960, at the age of 73. Robert Molnar was born November 25, 1941, 
in South Bend to Stephen and Anna Mary Molnar. When he graduated high school, Robert went to work for the South Bend Street Department as a foreman and held that job for 14 years. Robert enlisted in the U.S. Navy in 1960 during the Vietnam War, and while in Hawaii, he married Sandra Taylor and they had one son. Robert liked Hawaii so much that he permanently moved there after getting out of the Navy. He lived on the island for 22 years after having owned a restaurant and as a stint as a boat captain for a charter boat company. He moved back to St. Joseph County and died on August 31, 2014 at the age of 72. Michael Unruh was born around Galene, Michigan in 1842. When the Civil War began, he traveled to Niles where he took his oath on August 12, 1861. He was a private attached to the 9th Michigan Infantry in Company B. The 9th Michigan saw action at the Battle of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Stones River, the Battle of Chickamauga, and many other smaller battles and skirmishes. Sometime after the Battle of Murfreesboro, the 9th Michigan Infantry was involved in a small skirmish at a place called Tyree Springs in Tennessee. Michael Unruh was killed sometime during that conflict. His body was brought back to St. Joseph County and buried next to his mother Hannah in Hamilton Church Cemetery. David Dalrymple was born in Coleraine, Massachusetts on August 28, 1793. Sometime during his early life, he moved to Pennsylvania, and when the War of 1812 broke out, he enlisted in the 2nd Battalion of the Pennsylvania Militia. After the War of 1812, he moved to St. Joseph County. He married Sarah Ann Ranstead in 1817, and they had six children who have descendants still living in the area. Frederick Drewliner was born June 18, 1754, in Salem County, New Jersey. When the American Revolution began, he enlisted in Captain Benjamin Holmes' New Jersey Regiment. He had enlisted and was put into duty June 17, 1776. Frederick was assigned to Fort Mercer in Gloucester County, New Jersey, where he was honorably discharged in March of 1778. As part of the payment to veterans of the American Revolution in lieu of money that the new struggling United States government didn't have, men were given land in the West, which at that time included land that would become Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, and Kentucky. Since record keeping wasn't a priority, and we don't know exactly when Frederick Drewliner came to St. Joseph County. However, he did move here and probably became a farmer around the Hamilton, Indiana area in northwestern St. Joseph County. Frederick married Hannah Summers and they had a child. They named him Gabriel. Gabriel had children and most of them settled around the Hamilton and LaPorte County areas. Frederick Drewliner, who was an American Revolutionary War veteran, died June 3, 1841 at the fantastic age of 87. Frederick Lear was born in New Carlisle, Indiana on November 15, 1926. On his 18th birthday, he enlisted for the Army for service during World War II. He served for two years in the Army and was honorably discharged as a sergeant on December 5, 1946. However, Frederick's military career wasn't over. On November 15, 1950, he re-enlisted in the Army during the Korean War. He served for about a year and was once again honorably discharged August 6, 1951. After returning to the New Carlisle area, he lived and worked until his death on December 8, 1986. At the age of 60, he was buried in Hamilton Cemetery with only his World War II service denoted on his grave marker. Ezra Fox was born in Ohio in April of 1832. As a lad, he moved with his family to St. Joseph County, eventually settling in Olive Township. On September 20th, 1864, he enlisted for duty during the Civil War. He was assigned to Company B of the 23rd Indiana Infantry Division. When Ezra enlisted, he participated in several small battles, 
but was attached to Sherman's Great March to the Sea. After the South's surrender, Ezra's division participated in the Grand Review March in Washington, D.C. After returning to Louisville, Ezra Fox was honorably discharged on July 7, 1865. Ezra returned to St. Joseph County and became a very sought-after carpenter. He died December 28, 1906 at the age of 74 and was buried in Hamilton Cemetery with full military honors. Llewellyn Farouz was born in 1836. When the Civil War came, Llewellyn was drafted and was enlisted in Company B of the 23rd Indiana Infantry on September 20, 1864. The 23rd Indiana Infantry was involved in the Battle of Shiloh, the Siege of Vicksburg, and the Siege of Atlanta, and participated in Sherman's March to the Sea. Sometime during Llewellyn's service, he may have been severely injured. He was discharged July 7, 1865 and returned home. However, he died just about a month later on August 8, 1865 at the age of 28. He's buried in Hamilton Cemetery and his stone's in pretty rough shape, uh, as you can see from this picture. Uh, I'm not quite sure why he didn't get a military stone. Um, it could be that uh, nobody was able to find the paperwork on uh, his enlistment or uh, how he died. I did find a pension record, meaning somebody, his wife's uh, mother, father, somebody, uh, filed for uh, support, monetary support from the government because of his death, evidently attributed to his Civil War duty. Thank you so much for participating in this virtual cemetery tour. Hopefully we can get back to normal in-person cemetery tours in the summer of 2021. If you would like to keep up to date on the latest cemetery tours, feel free to follow Michiana Cemetery Tours on Facebook. Just search for Michiana Cemetery Tours within the Facebook search box. Thanks again. Happy Veterans Day to all of you veterans, and we thank you for your service. We hope to see you here at the History Museum soon.